right, everybody. So today we're gonna do some really adorable glass valentines. I'm gonna do two different types. I'm gonna do a single heart, and then I'm going to do a doubled heart. Um, that's just gonna look like they're overlapped, so I simplify this design here. I just kind of make the bow of the heart at the top there uh, not as sharp. It'll make it look more like the candy, but also make it easier to cut. And this is my glass palette. I'm gonna go with some pastels to kind of really look like that sugary sweet tart candy. So I'm drawing out my template on the glass. I'll show you the other way that I normally do it, but if you're, you know, if you're not confident in cutting the glass, you can just do it just like this. It just wastes a little bit of the glass. So just trace out your beautiful hearts and then get ready to cut. I have a few here, one that's going to be overlapping and then I have the single hearts that you see. So you'll, I mix and match the colors to make them kind of give them more interest in design. I'll be doing a video shortly on all my tools. Um, I love this little glass cutter that I have and my little hammered one that you see. But once you make your score, you're gonna press down and you're gonna hear it like a really beautiful kind of crinkly sound. You don't wanna press too hard. You're not trying to cut through the glass. You're just trying to kind of scratch it, you know, a thick scratch. So this is the way that I try to save some glass and I overlap the two. You see the two hearts there that are overlapped. I will start cutting out all my pieces like that. It just saves me just a little bit of glass. It actually makes it a little easier and it's less cutting. So that's what I do here. This glass is almost like a lot tougher, a lot almost thicker than the normal like stained glass glass but I have a ton of it these pastel colors are beautiful but I just haven't used it much so I was really excited to kind of make these sweet tarty um, stained glass candies and kind of cookies that they look like so these will make really cute Valentine's but also be you know really fun and easy and decorative that's the cool thing about using it like making holiday decor you know stained glass can last a lifetime so you one if you purchase it you definitely get your money's worth and two if you make it obviously you're even more proud of it but it's beautiful it's, it gives everything a very kind of high class beautiful um, as far as decor goes it's not you know the plasticky stuff you would just pick up at you know like your big commercial type stores this is a great first time project so if you want to give it a shot you know the actual heart is a very basic shape there's not much grinding to be had it's you know very easy to solder So I am putting all my colors together, just trying to figure out what colors go with what. I tend to get way too picky. It's They all are beautiful. <laughs> but here's my grinder. I pour some water in the top. I wear my, my eye protection, which I just use a whole face mask that I got with my sandblaster, which I love. I, I don't really like things covering my eyes. But I have a, a lot of grinders. I use this one <laughs> all the time. It's actually one of like the least expensive ones that I have. But it's awesome, it's smaller, I can just kind of pick it up and put it wherever it is, wherever I need it, um, pull it out, it's easy to store. And I am just slowly grinding all my edges, smoothing them out, I love grinding. And um, you just wanna make sure that sponge is wet. So I foiled all my pieces, I foiled them inside, but if you want to see more about foiling, you can go to my DIY feathers video. I kind of talk about it a little more there. And right now I'm just kind of burnishing. I'm making sure my foil is nice and flat. 
Um, this foil isn't actually, it's kind of lost its adhesive qualities, and that's okay. If you feel like your foil isn't as sticky as what you're used to, it's really not that big of a deal. As long as you get it, you know, nice and flat on there and you burnish it nicely. I always use like whatever tool for what you would call a fid. I just, I, people buy fids, but I just use whatever. So I kind of overlapped my foil here, and that's an easy fix. I just take my X-Acto knife and I just trim it. Because if you do overlap your foil, it will show. Your solder will look uneven. It's very, very obvious. That's like one of the things that you can't really get away from. So if you don't want to refoil it, you know, I would not suggest refoiling. It's kind of a waste. I mean, unless one side is really not over the other side of it, just take an X-Acto knife and trim it. And then you're just gonna flux it and add your solder. I just kind of ball up my solder right on the table and move it onto it. It's a beautiful, beautiful process. As long as the flux is on there, it goes on smooth and I mean, it's just a really cool medium to work with. I, I love soldering. Now I apply my jump ring. I always hold my jump ring with my uh, my paintbrush here and that's because the solder will literally suck up your jump ring right into the piece. You, you'll lose it in there so you kind of want to use something to hold it in there. And this is me doing my little overlapped piece. And you're going to do the same thing. You're just gonna flex it and glide your solder iron with your solder right over that middle seam and just smooth it out. If it looks a little crinkly or wrinkly or whatever, just go over it a few times and it'll all get nice and molten and smooth right out. When I add the jump rings to this one, I want to be a little bit more particular. Um, the, the single heart is super easy. You just put it right in the middle of its little heart bow there. But with this one, you want it to hang nice and evenly. So I'm going to do the top corners of each heart. And I want to make sure there is enough solder there. If there's not enough solder there, you you can end up pulling up the foil. With this piece, it's not that heavy, so it's not as concerning, but you always want to, it just looks nicer, everything's nice and even, you have a beautiful kind of thick border of solder around your piece, and it's more sturdy, so it'll last longer if it's more sturdy. And then you're gonna do it the backs of them. Alright, so with my hearts, I wanted to make them a beautiful copper color. And you want to definitely wear gloves. The copper can sting. I mean, the flux can sting. Generally, you should wear gloves anyway. I mean, I hardly wear gloves. Sometimes I decide to. I don't really know how my mind works, but I'm always all over the place. But I had some cuts on my fingers and I was feeling the burn from that flux. So I put my, uh, my gloves on. You just wanna make sure your piece is nice and clean. If it has any flux on it, that flux is gonna make your beautiful copper like an almost an antique color or even black. It's very, very frustrating if you have a picture in your mind of this beautiful copper piece and it turns out dark as hell. So make sure you clean it nicely. I also, after I wash it, I actually will use rubbing alcohol on it as well just to make sure there's no oil on it. So, and I don't, I know a lot of people use like toothbrushes. That doesn't really work for me. I just use a rag. I just dip the tip of a rag in and I rub it pretty hard. I mean, not gonna lie, if I, I definitely, definitely rub it harder than what I think most do and that gives it kind of the brighter shine. So, to kind of candyfy these, I just take some three dimensional paint and I just start drawing on just different words and different kind of decorations almost as if they are cookies or they are the sweet tart candies and I think I mean I love three-dimensional paint it's just kind of a it just makes the piece fun now obviously this is not something I mean if you were to take a razor blade and just try to like peel it off you would so there are ceramic paints out there that you would do before 
you even start soldering or foiling, you would paint your image on there and you'd actually, you can bake your glass in the oven. That will get it to stay on there forever and you can do that, but I really love like the three-dimensional quality and I just think it looks fun, especially, you know, with the kind of decor pieces. I just think it's, it's awesome. So here they are, I love them. I just think they are the sweetest pun, I mean totally intended, but they are so cute. They look like cookies and candies and treats and they're really, really cute. I just put a bunch of different messages. I had some suggestions on the Facebook page from people, you know, what to put on there. So I just went with that. And then some of them I thought looked a little plain. So I wanted to add some lines and borders and things like that. And those ones kind of look more like cookies. But uh, if you're interested in these, you can head over to the Etsy shop. If you want to make them, send me some pictures. Go to the Facebook page or the Instagram page and I hope you enjoyed. So I'll see you next time. Happy Valentine's Day.